Welcome back to our tutorial. By this time, you should already know how to formulate the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Let's have a quick recap what hypothesis is. In statistics, a hypothesis is a statement that we want to test using data. Typically, there's a null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. In this video, we'll be focusing on formulating these hypotheses for a population mean, and um, we'll talk about the probability, the usual probability values for the level of significance. Let's get started. The null hypothesis uh, denoted by H sub zero is a statement that there's no significant difference or effect. It represents the status quo or the idea that there's no change, no difference, no relationship, no change, does not increase, does not decrease. While the alternative hypothesis is the opposite of the null hypothesis. There's an effect, there's a difference, there's a relationship, there's a change, it increases, it decreases. When dealing with population mean, the null hypothesis often assumes that the population mean is equal, greater than or equal, less than or equal to a specific value denoted as mu. While the alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, denoted as h sub 1 or h sub a, is what we aim to support with evidence from our sample data. It represents the idea that there is significant difference or effect. It's the opposite of the null hypothesis. The mean is not equal to mu, the mean is greater than the mu, or the mean is less than the mu. Well, to understand this better, let's have an example. The guidance office at Concepcion Integrated School found that the average weekly absenteeism for grade 11 students was 9. After implementing an intervention program for a sample of 25 students with an average of 5 absences per week, they question if the program effectively improved Oops the attendance. How can we state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis? We can state the null hypothesis as the mean is equal to 9. It suggests that the average weekly absenteeism for grade 11 students remains the same after implementing the, inter the intervention program. The alternative hypothesis can be stated as less than 9. The intervention program is effective in improving attendance, leading to decrease in the average weekly absenteeism for grade 11 students. Let's have another one. After a mean score of 68 from an evaluation exam, a teacher tested a new strategy on 18 students with the lowest scores. The result, a mean score of 69 5 prompts the question if the new strategy significantly improved performance. The question now is, does the new teaching strategy significantly improve the performance of students? How can we state our null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis? Now, we can state the null hypothesis as equal to 68, where the mean is equal to 68. It suggests that the new teaching strategy has no significant effect on students' performance. The alternative hypothesis can be stated as mu is or the mean is greater than 68, meaning that the new teaching strategy significantly improves students' performance. Let's have another one. A soda factory claims each beverage bottle contains a constant 355 ml. A consumer inspector disputes, suggesting the factory's drink may not consistently meet the 355 ml volume. So the null hypothesis can be stated as uh, the mean is equal to 355. And the null hypothesis can be stated as the volume uh, can be stated as the mean is not equal to 355. In hypothesis testing, a level of significance is crucial and is represented by the Greek symbol alpha. The choice of this significance level depends on the certain, on the research nature, with commonly used values being alpha as uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and 0 0.1. In our case, we opt for a 95% confidence level level as we are not operating within the medical field. Corresponding to alpha uh, equals 0 0.05. Additionally, we need to determine which tailed test 
to employ. There is a left tail test, a right tail test, and a two tail test. Now, how do you know which tail test to use? Let's go back to our examples earlier. To figure out the appropriate tail test, examine the alternative hypothesis. Take example number one. The arrow is pointing to the left. We will employ a left tail test. In example number two, where the symbol points to the right, the correct choice is a right tail test. Moving to example number three, where the alternative hypothesis says not equal to 355, it could be lower or higher than 355, then a two-tailed test is the way to go. Now, let's look at the left tail test. The shaded region of the left is the rejection region. The shaded part is where we don't reject the null hypothesis. The Z value that splits the shaded and unshaded regions is the critical point. It decides whether to reject or accept the null hypothesis. It's the same thing with the right tail test. This is the rejection region and the unshaded region is the fail to reject region. If the computed value falls below the critical value, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. But if the computed value is higher than the critical value, then we reject the null hypothesis. In the two-tailed test, the rejection region splits into two regions. Again, the shaded region, the, the shaded regions are the rejection regions, and the unshaded region is the fail to reject region. If the computed Z value falls in the shaded region, which can be on the left or on the right of the normal curve, then we have to reject the null, the null hypothesis. Now it's quiz time. You may take a screenshot of each item and Let's we'll go. answer this later. Hey, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.